Courbet also famously paints the burial at Ornans, another massive painting. But the size of it actually plays into the composition and the meaning. We'll get to that in a minute. What we see is a painting that depicts a funeral in a bleak landscape outside of his hometown. You see many responses to the scene in the faces of the mourners. And this is a very anonymous burial. We have no idea who the person is. We don't even see a body. Instead, we see a hole and we see mourners. Now, although the work is the same scale as the great history paintings, the stark anti-heroic composition and ordinariness really horrified critics and horrifies a lot of people. So when we look at it, it's an ordinary everyday scene and it's not the sort of thing that's generally captured by an artist. Generally, if we're seeing a burial, it's going to be of someone quite famous, a pope, a potentate, a king, someone of importance. Here it's, well, we don't know. The figures block access to deep space. They keep us in this foreground area. We cannot go beyond this simple area, these few inches of grass before we run into the figures. Each figure is a portrait of someone in his hometown. And they were generally modeled by the artist's sisters, in some cases to fill in the image. So you will see in some cases faces that look remarkably similar because they are. He's using the same model. It's nothing new here. It's something that artists have done for generations. But let's talk about the biggest issue here, the grave, right there front and center. It actually pushes into the viewer's space. It's the only place that we can enter into the painting, putting us as the party being buried in the painting. It's our funeral. It becomes a memento mori. It becomes a reminder of death, that this could happen at any day. The only difference is now we can see it. Otherwise, you can't because generally you're in a big wooden box. So what's going on here? Well, these two images illustrate a change from the heroic and the sublime that we're used to with the romantic to the artist as a source of social consciousness, an illustrator more than an artist, capturing historical reality, really becoming the curator of our visual history in a far more realistic and arguably far more useful way than artists like, say, Velasquez, who's capturing the surrender of Breda in terms that are very optimistic and arguably completely juxtaposed to the actual history of the event. So that's part of the importance of an artist like Courbet. He's showing us everyday life. He's giving us that visual context to the history that you might read about in high school, college, or wherever else. 